the nerve to not even have a decent size. You get what I'm trying to say. Basically, what I'm trying to say is, nigga, you have the nerve to want to fucking be abusive months later. The fuck? I should have fucking known because he was he was small. Like, he didn't have no type of muscle. Like, he was just a regular size ass fucking nigga. Like, basically, he damn near looked like me with a little bit more meat on his bones. And a little yeah. something here and here. watching Miss Angelique TV where we talk about everything and when I mean everything I mean um day five of story months as y'all can tell by the title I'm gonna be discussing about how um ghosts moved in for the first time before I get into what I'm getting ready to say I wanna I know y'all may be noticing like my nails I want to give a big shout out to um Houston Diva Nails she does my nails and she also does Queen from Chris and Queen channel nails um Emily from Em and Vaughn Ari from I am Ari. She does all of our nails. Um, they are all YouTubers if you don't know who they are. I want to give a shout out to her. If you're in the Houston area, don't forget to like after this video, go to her Instagram. I always post my nails whenever I um, get them done by her. So you can just go follow her on Instagram to get your nails done because girl, she is like the hottest in Houston. Like I'm not even much gonna lie. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe right now. And also if you haven't like watch the other four story times you may want to go ahead and watch that now because if you don't if you just like jump into this story time some some details may not make sense to you so i advise for you to go start off at number one or number one is kind of like different but at least start off from number two and move your work your way up i am numbering my videos so it's gonna be easy for you to tell if you watched my last video i basically talked about how Ghost and I um, saw each other, well, met for the very first time in person, face to face. He would come to my house like three to four times a week, but whatever his um, brother's wife would off work, cause you know, he didn't have a car either. You know, he didn't have no job or no car and his phone was off, like girl, what the fuck? But he would use their car um, a little bit after they got off work and like pick up their kids from school and stuff like that. So he never came to my house until probably after about maybe like six or seven something like that and he would usually stay until about five o'clock in the morning he would always come to my house and it got to the point where he even started bringing his fucking playstation to, to my house and y'all know whenever a nigga bring his playstation like he damn near fucking moved in and made himself fucking comfortable um but he would always bring it back with him whenever he leave but he started like coming so often that he would even leave it there at times because he knew he was coming to my house the very next day or the day after. My mom actually was in jail for a few months prior to this happening. So basically my mom got out of jail in September. She came um, to my house. She came from New Orleans to Houston in October of 2016. And um, initially she was just coming to help me move because in my very first story time that I spoke about, um, I did move buildings. Like I moved, I stayed in the same apartment complex, but I moved um, buildings. I moved from a one bedroom to a two bedroom. My mom had just got out of jail. Um, she didn't really have anywhere to go anyway. So she came up here to help me move. That was what the plan was. She was supposed to help me move and like, you know, go about her business afterwards. But um, basically she ended up moving in <laughs> after she helped me move. Now, uh, I didn't have a problem with that because I was working from home and it was me and um, my kids, you know, she was like a, a help. Like she always helped me and stuff like that. We did have our differences and still probably do have our differences here and there. But um, overall, like we, we are okay right now. I'll do a whole separate video on that because I know a lot of y'all been asking. But anyways, my mom got out of jail and she moved in with me come October 2016. At that time, Ghost had not moved into my house. He was still always coming like back and forth staying 
for a long periods of time. Goes, he was actually trying to look for a job. I was the one, I made, I created his resume, I even applied for the job because he was like, oh, I'm not good at applications. Like, nigga, what you mean you're not good at applications? You graduated from high school, so if you can do a test, you can do a fucking application. But anyways, he was, he always c complained about how he hated doing applications and how he was, wasn't good. So, I was the one filling out these applications for him and trying to, you know, find him a job. And I actually started applying for places around my house because he would always complain about living with his people, which again, I'm talking about his brother and his sister-in-law, which is his brother's wife, obviously. He would always complain about being over there and how he, he wanted her to start working, start making his own money. At this point, we were boyfriend and girlfriend, if y'all don't know. We ended up becoming official in September. And that was like a month before mama moved in, by the way. I was in my new apartment and um, he wanted me to help him, well, help him look for a job, even though I did all the fucking work. But I ended up, applying for a lot of places around the area and he was like i don't even care what it is it could be fast food it could be whatever um, i just need a job so i'm like okay i mean at least you you, you want to work the fact that he wanted to work i'll say um it it made me i guess happy because i was once with someone who didn't want to work so the fact that i was i went from being with someone who didn't really want to work to being with someone who wanted to work who didn't even really care what type of job it was i was like oh, okay at least he trying so, y'all know me, I always try to look, you know, past the, the negative aspects of people. But I was like, oh, well, at least he's trying or whatever. So, like I said, I applied for some um, jobs around the area. And around me, it was like a lot of fast food places like Popeye, Jack in the Box, um, Taco Bell, what else? McDonald's, Burger King. And it was also walking distance. And I made sure that I applied for these jobs that were walking distance because... Um, where he stayed, where, well, where his brother stayed, and, you know, he was living with his brother at the time as well. I don't think it had, they had many places around for him to, like, you know, walk to if he wanted to. And even though his brother had two cars, two vehicles, his brother will always be at work and his, um, wife will always be at work. Or they will always be doing something, so it was really hard for him to really, you know, um, maneuver. Like, he would always have to ask for the car and stuff like that, and he wanted to just see if I could find him a job near me. He would kind of like throw hints here and there that he wanted to move in. Basically, I ended up um, applying for all of those places in the area just about. He um, got a call, phone call from McDonald's, which was like literally walking distance from my house, like probably not even a 10 minute walk, um, depending on how fast you walk. So he went to his interview and stuff like that. He was so excited, y'all. I'm saying he was so fucking excited about working at McDonald's. I'm not talking down on people who work at fast food places. Mind y'all, I was a working bitch. I made, I'm not gonna see him brag, but at the time I made some decent money um, to be able to take care of him, my mama, my kids, and you know, bills that was well over a thousand dollars a month got the job at mcdonald's and uh, he started working there they were only paying him 725 whenever he worked there and he was he wasn't even tripping about it he was like well, i don't even give a fuck at least i have a job i ain't even tripping and i'm like okay you know at least you have a job whatever um we didn't discuss like if he was gonna move in because he was so close to me we didn't really discuss it at that time he would just go back and because he was part-time anyway so whenever he would have to work he would just come to my house and then leave um whenever he was off or whatever and go back by his brother house and like you know wash his clothes and stuff like that and basically get prepared to come right back to my house because he would always go back and forth from my house to his house like he even got to the point where his um brother I uh, didn't even want him to use a car anymore. Like, they was, they was tripping, they was complaining. And I'm, I'm more than sure that they had a lot of problems with him that he didn't tell me. But I'm more than sure it was because of his attitude, because of how he is. Like, he's a very ignorant person. So I'm more than sure they had those type of issues. Kind of the same issues that I had. He got to the point where he couldn't um, take his brother's car to come back and forth to my house. So I ended up always Ubering him to my house because... Again, my car was still in the shop. My car had a major problem, and I basically got fucked over. It kind of got, like, robbed from money. So my car was in the shop for a while because of that reason. Like I said, I was Ubering him back and forth, like, spending, I think it cost probably, like, close to $20 to get him from his brother's house to my house or from my house to his brother's house. Of course, I was paying for all of this. Um, I paid for basically 98% of our relationship. I paid for everything. 
um, but we'll get into that as well later. After Christmas, you know, comes New Year's and stuff like that, and um, something happened. I don't know what happened. I will never, I probably will never figure out what happened, but it was an altercation that he had between his brother and his wife. Um, and something happened and he called me and he was like, uh, man, I want to come over there and, you know, can you give me an Uber? And y'all, let me tell y'all, I always, I had a friend who had an Uber account and would always let me use his Uber. And he didn't know about it. The way that ghost was, he was kind of like the jealous type. Like, I don't know. I can't really explain it. Like, he didn't really, it's like he was jealous, but he tried not to show that he was jealous, but I kind of knew he was jealous. But anyways, I didn't want to tell him that. Um, my friend was helping me because at the time I didn't have a regular, I didn't have a credit card. You have to have a credit card or something like that uh, to sign up for Uber. And I didn't have that. I had a card, but it wasn't like a major credit card at that time. I have one now, but it wasn't that at the time. It wasn't like a major bank card. So I will always have to like PayPal my friend the money so that he can, you know, pay for the fucking trip. And mind you, this person didn't even stay in Houston. Like he stayed in fucking, uh... I think Atlanta. Yeah, he's in Atlanta at the time. So, like, he was nice enough. And I actually met him through YouTube. It's weird. I know. Um, I'm sure he's watching this too. He was nice enough to help me out. So, that's what I did to get him back and forth. And so, let's move forward. He ended up getting to some type of altercation, dispute, whatever, with his people. And he called me. He was like, I want to come over there. Something happened or whatever. I'll tell you about it later. And he sounded really, really, like, bothered. And I was really, really, wor like, worried. I'm like, what the fuck going on? Like, you know, I hope everything's okay. So, end up Ubering, Ubering him back to my place. He didn't really tell me what happened. And at this point in our relationship, I was, like, kind of still timid. Like, I always, yeah, I was I was timid most of our relationship up until the end when I was like fed up with his bullshit. And it's like I was like afraid to ask him certain stuff. Like I, I was like really afraid to kind of like get in his mind. The vibe that I got from him was like, bitch, don't ask me nothing. Like, you know, um, don't talk to me. Don't get in my business. He didn't really talk that much still while we're in, in a relationship. He still really didn't talk to me that much. I never really knew why, and I was still, I, I never really got comfortable with him, honestly. I never really got fully comfortable with him, even though I let him fucking move in. I still wasn't comfortable, I know, stupid as fuck, but I loved him at that point, I guess you can say, or I thought I did, and um, I, was, I, I wasn't worried about none of that. So, he came to my house, didn't really explain to me the situation, um, about a day or two later, his brother called him and he he has a horrible attitude y'all he has a horrible temper he gets mad at the dumbest stuff like i remember one time i went to go fucking make him uh well he wanted me to bake him some cookies he's like nah you ain't gotta do it if you don't feel like it i basically told him i wouldn't do it if i didn't want to and he got mad because i told him that and i don't know why the fuck he got so mad or offended like he really got mad i like a lot of different situations like petty situations we went through i felt like he was just picking at me to start an argument or something because he was doing dirt low-key and wanted to you know feel good about himself i don't know but he got mad because i said something like that like nigga i was just playing and so i always found myself explaining myself to him trying to make him feel better when i wasn't even the one in the wrong basically i kissed his ass a lot like 90 five plus percent of the relationship i will i'm gonna admit i know stupid but i'm just keeping it real he got into it with his brother on the phone they were i guess they were discussing what happened and he was like trying to apologize but didn't end up fucking going back and forth with his brother arguing with him and started cursing and stuff like that and basically that conversation ended and uh, and before the conversation ended his brother was like you gotta get out of my house like you are no longer welcome you gotta get your stuff and get the fuck out basically and so i heard his brother actually say that on the phone like he wasn't on speaker but his brother was so loud that i heard the conversation and so after he got off the phone like after he said that ghost just hung up the phone like he didn't even say nothing like he just hung up the phone and that right there kind of like i i wonder like nigga like you a bitch because like you just gonna hang up the phone and then a few minutes later call him back thinking his answer gonna change and his, his brother still was like adamant like nigga i want you out my house like i can't deal with whatever was going on i can't deal with you so um basically he was telling him about himself and he doesn't ghost is the, the type of person who don't like to fucking listen he don't he think he's right about everything and that's just how he always was and i'm sure he's gonna always be like that 
Um, he was even like that with his mom. Like, he would get into it with his mama because his mama would send him some fucking money. Like, he would get mad because his mama wouldn't send him money. We'll talk about the whole money situation in my next story time. So, after his brother told him that and he basically called him back and was like, you know, you for real? Like, are you sure? Or something. And his brother was like, nigga, like, yeah, did I stutter? He talked to me. He was like, well, my brother wanted me to give him my things, basically. And he don't want me there no more. And so, you know me... I was like, you know, babe, you can always be, be here, you know, I want you to come here anyways, and, you know, you, you know, my house is your house. Basically, he was always there any fucking way because he had to always come to my house in order to go to work. So, um, whenever I said that, he, like, the next day or two, um, he got one of his friends, um, because he had met some girl, like, she was a gay girl that um he, he met her at the gym and so she had she was the one to take him to his brother's place to get his stuff and so he bought all of his stuff all of his shit girl like he bought everything to my house and that was that whenever he came to my house and you know settled down packed his stuff or unpacked his stuff rather um he was like because again my mama was living with me at that time still um this is January. His mom lived in New Orleans, so he was like, you know, I moved out here because, you know, I wanted to be out on my own and experience life, and I didn't want to feel like I'm underneath somebody's roof. Mind you, it was my apartment, under my name, my shit, my everything. So he basically felt like by, by my mama living with me that he was underneath somebody's roof I mean, bitch uh, let's be real you are underneath my roof but my mom has nothing to do with that my mom will always be in the, in the room with the kids or in the living room like she minded her business like she had nothing to do with him but he had a fucking problem with my mother being there mind you my, my mama was cooking cleaning helping me with my babies all that she wasn't in nobody's way and even if she was like nigga you came here she was here before you and number two she's my mother me Another dumb thing I will say, I was I wanted to make him so happy that I was like, okay, well I'm gonna talk to my mama and see what she wanted wanna do because at the time my mama wasn't working, she wasn't doing anything with her life basically and what she needed to do something with her life, but I didn't wanna fucking kick my mama out or anything like that. But um I just basically made up something. I was like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to talk to her and this and that to see what she wanted wanna do and stuff. But I knew for a fact that I wasn't gonna kick my mama out for him, like for no nigga. But I just told him that to kinda get him off my case for a few weeks or so because he would always bring it up like a few weeks later. Your mama's still here. I feel like I can't do nothing. I can't have company. Bitch, first of all, this is my house. This is my shit. Nigga, you shouldn't even have the nerve to even want company. You're not paying bills, honey. Like, w like what's really going on? Yeah, he was basically like, my mama gotta go and if my mama don't go soon, then he gonna get his own place. How? Making $7.25, boo. How? Tell me how the fuck you gonna get a place making $7.25. Has anyone did it before? Then he was working part-time on top of that. The checks that he was coming home with were no more than $300. One of his checks was a little bit more than $300, but that was because he did overtime. I think it was like $385 before tax. And you want me to kick my mama out for you whenever she was already here, whenever she fucking birthed me? Are you serious? No, sir. I was basically just talking to him. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna figure something out. Every time he would bring it up, because he would bring it up quite quite often and basically kind of like threaten me in a way like if she don't leave, then I'm going to get my own shit. I wasn't even really happy at that point anyway, because first of all, sex life was poo as fuck. Second of all, he wasn't paying anything. I was cooking. I was cleaning. I was washing dishes. I was fucking washing his fucking drawers and all of this, providing for him while he was under my roof, while I'm taking care of my two kids, while I'm taking care of my mother who just got out of jail and didn't have anything. So I'm taking care of all of these people, including myself. I was telling my boyfriend earlier today, I was like, I don't even know how the fuck I did it because my bills were expensive as fuck at that time. I mean, my bills still expensive, but <laughs> my bills were expensive as fuck for me to be doing it by myself. I'm only, at the time I was only 21, I'm taking care of two grown people, well, really three grown people, including myself and my two kids. Ain't nobody helping me. I'm doing this shit by my fucking self. And you have the nerve to sit here and try to give me the ultimatum, basically, like, it's either your mama or me. How dare you? And then, on top of that, like I said, he was only working part-time. So, this nigga would get up at about 6 o'clock in the morning and be back home at 11 from fucking work. Like, he didn't really work that many hours. I think the most he worked was like a six hour shift. He hardly ever did a full eight hour shift. He hardly ever worked five days out the week. He was part time as fuck, my nigga. Like, the definition of part time, that's what the fuck McDonald's gave him 
a part-time fucking job, okay? He also ended up getting fired from that job. Um, I think I'm gonna put that, yeah, I'm gonna put that in my next story time. How I got him another job at Taco Bell. Right across the street from McDonald's. Like, he would only fucking work six hours, no more than six hours, on a good day. And come home and fucking smoke weed, be on the fucking game, uh, Call of Duty all day that's the, that's all he did he didn't get in the kitchen and start cleaning he didn't get in the kitchen start cooking um hunger every time he hungry i gotta go fucking figure something out buying fucking food going broke trying to please this nigga but me being stupid and dumb i tried everything like i will go broke y'all and we gonna talk about this in my next story time how i went broke like to my last like stuff getting cut off, disconnected because of him. The moral of this particular story is don't let no nigga come into your home, moving in, taking over shit. Especially if he's not contributing. Like my nigga, if we gonna be together, you gonna move in with me, you gonna, we gonna have to come up with a plan, like what you gonna pay, you know, what you gonna do to help me. Because if you're moving in, you're, that means you are putting more pressure on me. Moral number two is don't let another man or a female, whoever, try to put you against your mama. Like, don't do that. We, first of all, bitch, we already, me and mama already had issues of our own. Like, we didn't fucking fault. He really, like, tried to put me against my mama. Like, it's either me or your mama. Like, don't ever, ever allow any man. If any man does that, then he's not for you. Because a real man, we're not even gonna put you in a situation to where you have to choose between your family or him. That's basically it, y'all. I'm getting ready to record the second story time about how basically he stole all my money. Like, he he took it all, like, it was gone, and he was doing other stuff with other people with the money, okay? If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and subscribe right now. Also, thumbs up and leave a comment. Like, have y'all ever been with a nigga who ain't did shit, ain't even want to do shit for herself or for you, barely? Like, have y'all ever dealt with that? And if y'all have, like, did you kick him to the curb? Did you be stupid just like me? for another fucking six months or what. Let me know in the comments below and I hope to see y'all in my next story time. Bye. We're gonna talk about later. You would think that this nigga was laying it down how he was supposed to lay it down. Absolutely not. He wasn't laying anything down. Yeah, he wasn't. And like I said, he had the nerve to always want me to but never wanted to. Whenever he moved in, all that shit fucking changed, girl. I was begging for it. More number one of this story. If you not satisfied.